This is one of my all-time favorite books called The Way Things Work, and it explains hundreds of things that one might wonder about, like how a steam engine works, or even the internals of an electron microscope. And because it was published in the 1960s, it's sort of a snapshot of technology at that time, and covers things like punch card systems, magnetic core memory, and even the electromechanical relay. And seeing this particular diagram got me thinking that after using hundreds of these relays, we don't even know what they look like on the inside. So in this episode of Quick Clicks, let's dive in and see what makes these, well, click. Before we try to open this up, let's recap what we're dealing with here. After the model number, we see that this has a coil voltage of 5 volts, and then there's these three letters that are a bit more cryptic. According to the datasheet, the S means that the relay is plastic sealed, and the H indicates that the coil consumes 0.2 watts. But then we have this letter G, which means that this relay is ROHS compliant, which is pretty important since I do want to avoid hazardous chemicals whenever cutting or opening things up. And when we take a look at the relay from this profile, we can see that the case or shell is pretty thin. And if I catch it in just the right light here, we can actually see where it's sealed to the base of the relay itself. So my theory is that above this darker area, there's some airspace, and I should be able to safely make my cut just above that point. I thought about using a Dremel tool for this, but since the case is so thin, I think this simple utility knife should do the trick, and it will also be a lot less messy than a Dremel spraying plastic bits all over the place. Now I'm not recommending this method for opening a relay, and it's probably not the safest way to do this, so I'll just take things slow to keep my vital fluids on the inside of my fingers. And after a few minutes of surgery, we can finally see through the shell to the mysteries within. And I think that because I cut so close to where the shell is attached, I'll need the help of a small screwdriver to get it separated. I'm being pretty careful at this point, just because I don't want to risk damaging anything under the shell, which was still being pretty stubborn. But after breaking through the last corner, it finally happened. And once the shell is removed, we can now see that although these are more modern relays, the underlying electromechanical design is still the same as it's been for over a hundred years. Now that it's open, we can get a glimpse as to what the pins are actually connected to on the inside. Like all relays, we have these coil pins, which are attached to an electromagnet that runs lengthwise, and when energized, it pulls a metal armature that acts as a lever to raise these spring-loaded contacts. The next pin is the common, which is connected directly to these springy contacts that run across the top of the relay. And then we have the normally closed pin, which is connected to this base. And since the contacts normally rest on these, it ends up making a circuit between the common and the normally closed when the coil isn't energized. And our last pin is the normally open, which is tied to these higher plates, and these make a circuit with the common pin only when the coil is energized. And this all becomes a bit more apparent when we see the relay in action.
I thought that just for fun, I'd try this really cheap macro lens kit for a phone camera and try to get some closer views of the action. After seeing just how mechanical these relays are, I'm even more impressed with how this entire computer is actually able to function. There are over 400 relays working in tandem on this machine at the moment, and although it's slower than the average computer, it happily chugs along as it should. Now this is a quick clicks video, so I'll keep it short, but please let me know what you thought about it in the comments as well as any ideas that you have for future episodes.